Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Max here with another great business to discuss on this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Tim and he's selling his Amazon FBA and e-commerce business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. So welcome to the show, Tim. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Max. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, thank you. I'm looking forward to hearing more about your business. So it's an Amazon FBA and e-commerce business in the sports and outdoors niche, created in October 2016. The average monthly revenue for the business is $12,397 and makes an average of $3,723 per month in net profit. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 47584 to learn more about the business. Included in the sale is an Amazon seller account with eight SKUs, a primary domain and all site contents and files, two additional domains and all site contents files, trademark, social media accounts including Facebook, Instagram and YouTube, the SOPs, supplier contracts and relationships, employee contracts and an email list with 760 subscribers on Shopify and almost 6,000 on Zon pages stored in MailChimp and Aweber. So now that I've given an overview of the business, Tim, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, absolutely. I've been doing it for about four years now, but I've always been involved in like marketing activities and things like that. So really always interested in how to perform outreach and get in contact with the customer and, and learn their feedback and things like that and improve on the product. So I'm actually really product oriented. And that's actually led me to me and my business partner into this little little business venture that we're on right now. But yeah, it's been about three or four years that we've been working on this one business. And how did you come up with the idea for this particular business? Actually, it's because my business partner and I always had an interest in fitness. We, from a really young age, actually in high school, we were wrestling buddies. And wrestling is a pretty intense sport. It's like a it's actually probably one of the more physically demanding sports that you can have. It's like constant, strenuous effort, you know, as soon as the bell rings until it's over. So we're used to the amount of physical drain that it takes, but I think most athletes are accustomed to that, but they're not aware of the other side of that. So we're just basically approaching fitness from a different angle. And that's pretty much the basis of, of what, how we started the business and what our interests are and how that relates to the idea. And why did you decide to choose this particular business model? Are you talking about like just e-commerce or Amazon or? Both, really. I think it's because it's easy to scale. It's one of the easiest businesses to scale. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of time affluence. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, obviously are going to be busier than others, but in general, you know, I'm in control of my own time. I think most business owners, that's something that they're looking for, but they often get tied up in running all the gears and the cogs and the levers and, They don't really have a lot of time influence, but I mean, I can, I'm taking this call at three o'clock in the morning and I'm fine with it because I slept 12 hours before this. So, you know, I'm fresh. So like I pretty much run my life how I like, and it's all from a computer. I can run anywhere in the world. So, I mean, it's it's just great terms to, on how to make money and setting my own terms to to live my life how I like. And you talked about it being an e-commerce and Amazon FBA. How does this primarily make money? Could you give us a little idea of the split? Yeah, so I would say roughly 90% of the business revenues are from Amazon and the other is from Shopify. And where does the majority of your traffic come from? How do people find your listings, find your websites? We have a pretty strong ranking where we have a comparatively, we have pretty high reviews. So we have high visibility on Amazon. We're also in some special programs on Amazon that we get extra visibility for as well. And then we have our social media and micro influencers and things like that that really help promote. We are also, you know, on different podcasts that are very popular and things like that. So that's how people find out about us. And is there anything else you currently do in terms of marketing? Have you ever got involved with PPC ads, Amazon ads? No, not really. 
and there's reasons for that. And I think we're going to get into a little bit later and talk about maybe like perhaps the opportunities and things like that. But yeah, that's not something that we've touched really too much. Yeah, sure. Can you sort of describe the process of getting the inventory to Amazon? What's your relationship like there? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We have really good relationships with our factory, our manufacturer, and we have an agent that takes care of all the inspections and, and everything like that. And if we need a different sourcing and things like that, but basically you know, we put in an order with our agent or directly with the factory sometimes, depending on what it is. And our agent takes care of all the shipping and the logistics over the ocean. And then we have a, basically he can take care of everything from A to Z. But if we want to get a little bit more granular and control with the timing and the pricing and everything, then we also have a 3PL we use. So they could t- actually take it from the factory in China to Amazon as well. So it's just The easiest way, though, that we do is just have our agent handle everything from the factory to Amazon, and it's just one person. Can you describe the amount of work that you personally do for this business? Yeah, I would say that varies, you know, but generally it's just putting out fires. There are any. We have a system. It works. It's dynamic, and that's part of why we haven't really expanded our marketing efforts or product line or anything like that is because generally it's a very stable business to operate, but what I could say is I mostly check the emails, check how sales are going. I think that's something that's pretty normal for any business owner, just kind of just review, you know, what's going in, what's going out, and just look for processes that can be improved. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I mostly handle, like, maybe, like, if there's, like, taxes coming up and things like that, I'm just kind of, like, strategizing, maybe cash flow or things like that. But it's just pretty simple stuff, really. And you have some VAs working with you, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we do. And are you sort of aware of the sale? Could you talk about what their role is within the company? We have somebody who handles our customer service and administrative. So he's great. He's in the Philippines. He runs it for a couple of our companies, and he's amazing. And we have a we have a gal. She's in South Africa. She handles our social media. She handles outreach. She handles scheduling. And then she's amazing, too. So just two really good people that we work with. Cool. And are they aware of the sale? Yeah, they know about it. They're happy. I mean, regardless of the sale, we'd still be working with them anyways, you know, with other companies and things like that. And is there anything that you learned from this business that you might apply to future businesses? Yeah, everything. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, this was my first venture into Amazon. So, I mean, I learned so much just about like how the algorithm works, how to, you know, get outside of the algorithm, the black box and get customers and information or talk to them and engage with them and build my list and things like that. So a lot of valuable things for sure. And why are you deciding to sell the business instead of keeping it? That's a really good question. The reason why is because the way that the partnership is structured, it's very difficult for us to scale right now because the condition that my partner is in, he's actually not doing well like uh, health-wise. And so his finances are being redirected towards you know, paying off medical bills and things like that. So he's not really in a condition where he can put in money and help scale the business or do much work. So there's a lot of opportunity in terms of that because I guess it's sort of like a stress sell situation. We don't need to sell it, but it's also that we can't grow it because of his condition. So that's pretty much the best way to clean everything up and, and move on for both of us. If you were to keep the business, what are some ways that you might try to grow it? Yeah, so that's a really good question. We were prepared to grow the business, just unfortunately, because of the interruption and how things went, we weren't able to scale it the way we would have liked. Two really low-hanging fruits to grow the business would be expanding into Europe and Mexico and Japan and also more into Canada. So one of my other businesses does extremely well on Amazon. And so Amazon has basically rolled out the red carpet for us as far as paying for all of our VAT registration fees, which is thousands of dollars, getting us into uh, special programs, one of them being a a launch pad program, which gives us extra visibility, extra ranking boost, other benefits as well. And then we also get free translations. So, you know, any market we're in, whether it's Spain, Italy, Germany, you name it, they'll do the translations for us for free. Japan. So I have really good terms with my Amazon account specialist. And so I've already talked to them about, you know, expanding those types of offers to the company that we're selling now. So that's a really low hanging fruit, just basically getting the inventory there and then setting everything up with the account rep would be a really easy way to scale what's already working. You could take all the listings and get them translated. 
all the keyword resources are already been done. So you would just basically have them translate that and then just start doing the pay for click ads. So that's like one really strong way. Again, we haven't tapped into it just because it adds a little bit of complexity and we're pretty stable where we're at. The second really low hanging fruit is we've already set up an affiliate marketing program. So we have a really aggressive, because our margin is so strong that we are able to basically set up our affiliates to do big volume, which, you know, obviously in turn, the higher volume we do, we can get lower prices with our factory and, and things like that. But you know, the affiliates are able to get up to 50% of the price that they sell at. So it's pretty strong considering, you know, we have a, a price point that's not particularly low, especially for the market where at one of the higher price points, if not the highest. But yeah, so with that affiliate program incentivizes uh, wholesalers. It opens you up for wholesalers, other retailers, you know, yoga studios, gyms, influencers, and things like that so that they can basically see that there's a huge cut piece of the pie. We already have I think about 50 affiliates, but we just haven't really been pumping a lot of energy into it just because, again, of the added complexity of that. But the whole program's already built out, the terms, the marketing list and everything like that. So those are two. And then, again, earlier I had mentioned the opportunity with growing the revenue through ads. I think that's a really direct way if you already have experience or expertise in running ad campaigns through Google Ads or through Facebook. It's just a huge opportunity to just a huge lever that we haven't really built yet yeah definitely a lot of good interesting things to look at there but on the other side of that what do you think might be some of the biggest risks associated with this business i think right now generally i can say that you know we're in a pandemic people are unsure of you know what's going to happen with the economy and things like that when it's going to go up when it's going to go down but i think like with our supply chain it wasn't even affected really so you know with our supplies it wasn't affected our sales and haven't budged, you know, in this first quarter as far as fluctuations, really. It's been pretty solid, stable. So I would just say right now it's just a tough time for anybody to make any real tough decisions. But I think that's just generally speaking. And would you be willing to commit to a non-compete? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's part of the terms here. So. And how much support are you willing to offer in new buyers? Is that the Skype calls and the email support? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me personally, I would love to see this business grow and scale the way that I know it can and it should. It's the way that we have it positioned, the brand and everything is set to be something amazing. I know it. So we do have included, I think, like a set of calls. I think it's like 10 and emails. But I mean, that's just, you know, I would say like the entry level. You know, we can we can talk more with the buyer and things like that. But I would love to see it grow. I'd love to to help manage and if it was reasonable. That's really nice to hear. Um, would you be open to negotiating something like an earn out? Yeah, I think anything's on the table right now, but definitely not a preference. You know, it's not as clean, but I think anything's on the table as long as it makes sense. And what advice would you give to our listeners you wish you knew when you started? I would say, you know, in general, like a, one, a mindset thing would be to take everything as a learning experience. And if you see some things not work out, that's just a sign that you're learning. And, and it's valuable experience. But I say on a more technical level, probably that everything needs to be tested and implemented in a strategic way and testing different variables, but like just one at a time and, and seeing what works. Being totally agnostic, I guess, or unbiased about the results and just going with what works. Yeah, that's really good advice. Was there any software or tools that really helped you at the start when you were running this business? In the beginning, we used junk, something called Jungle Scout, and it's been become more robust in the past few years. But I think generally they all come to a point where they offer about the same value. But yeah, I mean, we use in the past, we've used many chats, it's on pages. We use Gramista until we actually hired somebody to take care of our social media for us. We actually use Helium 10 during for product research for other companies and things like that. But in general, I would say they're all about the same for Amazon tools, at least. Yeah, we've heard a few of those names before, but it's always good to see if there's anything new out there. Last sort of questions from me. Putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think that your business is worth buying? That's also a really good question. I think somebody who's looking to buy is looking for a lot of potential, a lot of opportunity that I mean, it's kind of like just, you know, in a partnership, you're looking for, you know, a complementary skill set. Maybe somebody who has a strong marketing background and doing Facebook ads, Google ads, really sees opportunity in a business that really hasn't tapped into that yet. 
I know a lot of my friends who run agencies and things like that. They talk to me about the opportunity in my business and other businesses that they've scaled. So I think anybody who has a familiarity or expertise in those regions will definitely see the opportunity. And is there anything else that you would like to share that I might have missed? No, I think you covered some really good questions there. Well, that's everything from me. Then Thank you for joining us, Tim. Yeah, thank you for having me. No problem at all. Okay, everyone, thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 47584. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. And I'll see you in the next episode.